just again, we we had struggled. We had been in a bad place. And we found a place and, and kudos to my wife. She kept looking. She found a place. She's like, let's go look at it. I'm like, why? Next thing you know, we're looking at this place and this guy's like, listen. And it's it's not a little place. It's 50 acres in the middle of nowhere with a beautiful house. We're in there. He's like, listen, if you guys are interested, you could just have it. I'm like, what do you need from us? He's like, nothing. No security right. pause, no nothing. No, just go. Right. Right, right, and, right. and all of those things. And, and I loved it because I was talking to one of my family members. And they're like, yeah, but why? Why would they have done that? That doesn't even make sense. I said, exactly. It doesn't make sense. If it made sense, it would just be me putting my nose to the grindstone. Mm -hmm. And and But it's not. It's God. God does unexplicable things. The Holy Spirit makes people do weird stuff. My phone rings. And they're like, hey, you can come pick up that Audi. I'm like, what everybody already told me i can't get what i want and they're like oh no i said well what do you need like it's a new business i don't even have a tax return yet they're like no documents needed just come in i i caution you as you step out in business i caution everybody as you step out in business make sure that you're working hard but make sure that you're leaving the door open for God to do unexplainable things because the moment that you think that it's out of your own power, the moment that you limit God into your own power, well, that's what you're going to get. You're going to just get what you have by your own power. I made a, a post uh, during prayer and fasting this year, and it said, big dreams bi or big goals, bigger God. And that's, that's the truth. You know, whatever goal I can come up with in my head, he built everything. Yeah. He made it all. Yeah. It's all his. Yes. So if, if I can literally sit there, fathom it, draw it on a table, that's nothing for him. We are, we are Christians. Join our podcast to listen. We are, we are Christians. Christians? Hey, what's up, everybody? New episode. We got we got some guests on. We got testimony. Jared, why don't you tell us tell us a little bit about this? Got my brother John Nauman here today. Right on. Did I say that right? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Nauman. Yeah. It's cool. called N A U M A N N. Cool. Time is now. The time, time is, is now. right now. So I met uh, John like I did most of the people we bring on at Revival Today Church. Uh, through Chuck Ondo, Valor Men's Grooming. Right, Told he was on Chuck Ondo, was on here with yeah. the uh, Semper Fi Mission. Yeah. Semper yeah. Fi Mission, Chuck Ondo. So I had an issue uh, in my basement that need resolved, and he said, hey, there's this guy. He started a new business called Alpha Air Quality. I love the name. He said that you were a Christian, and me being a Christian, I want to be involved with like-minded people. So I was like, let me get his number. I hit him up, and we, he just made it happen for me. Like, it was quick. It was fast. It was easy. So I thank you for that. Oh, yeah. But, uh yeah that's uh yeah that's how i remember meeting you so how did how did that all unfold well it's amazing that when you do and be around godly things uh what happens and it happens instantly you know i mm -hmm. was at a, a rt event it was called total bro we were watching the ufc fights yeah. on uh, it was a saturday evening and that's where i actually met chuck so that was saturday night i met chuck Literally gave him a you know a thirty second elevator pitch about my business mm -hmm. real quick. Didn't in my mind think two seconds of it. And literally a day and a half later, you had a had messaged me on Facebook. Hey, I got your information from Chuck. I have an issue right now. I'm going to need to be there, or I need you to come out, take a look, and, and help me out. Mm -hmm. And it started from there, you know. And I know that we did business together, and we did stuff at your house, but. You know, the meeting of business minds in the Christian world is so much more than just you use me, I use you. It's mm -hmm. literally surrounding yourself with with victory and, and the right mindset. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful, man. So, so like-minded people. Yeah, another Christian entrepreneur. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love yeah, that's it. That's what we're doing. Yep. Building for the kingdom. Alpha air quality. Alpha air Why don't you quality. talk a little bit about your business, what it is that you do real quick? Yeah, so I'm a certified indoor environmentalist. Uh, it's a really fancy way to say I do mold remediation. Um, okay. it, it is a little bit more in-depth than that. You know, in my industry, there's a lot of people who are dealing with some pretty significant medical issues, uh, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, uh, chronic Lyme's disease, and they've dealt with mold issues um, for years and years and years. There's even people who leave their house throw everything they own away, everything they've worked for for their mm -hmm. entire life. And I'm not talking about, like, you know, somebody who might have been homeless and had a couple shirts. I'm yeah. talking about people whose entire their lives, life. yeah. their kids' lives, everything, they're throwing it all away. And there's no hope for them. They, they don't have hope. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going into these places, they're scared to death, and people can prey on it. Mm -hmm. So um, I really focus on giving hope 
you know, preaching. I pray while I work there. I'll pray with my customers and giving them a sense of there is a solution. There isn't something to be afraid of. The Bible says that God gives us a spirit of, uh, not a fear, but of hope in a sound mind. Power, love, and sound mind. My clients have struggled for so long with that that they need reminded. And Mm -hmm. I, I think it's sad, but... A lot of my clients are a Christian background client. So mm-hmm. they're sitting there scared to death. But if you know God, what are you scared of? Mm-hmm. So it's Shouldn't just a anxiety. reminder. Right? Anxi- anxiety is from the enemy, it man. It is. It is. So there are a lot of companies out there in my industry who can prey on that fear. Right. And these people are willing to do whatever it takes. So if they're told, hey, you will get better if you just do X, Y, and Z. And X, Y, and Z might cost $200,000. They don't care. They'll do it. Yeah. So my goal is to come in, educate, use hope, use God, and help these people move forward in their yeah. life with some so how did, real how did solutions. You, how did you get into that? Was there? Did you were you at a previous place that you worked for? How did you get that skill set and that knowledge? Yeah. So I uh, I actually was with a company um, a long time ago, and I had been there for fourteen years. Mm-hmm. Um, In one point, they put a kind of feeler out into, it was a retail company, and they said, hey, we're looking for somebody who can do some outside sales. If anybody knows anybody, let us know. I said, hey, this is right up my alley. I've been in sales for a long time. More than happy to kind of diversify. It's an easy easy step for me, even though everybody here is in retail. So they then pitched and said, so what we're doing is starting a mold company. I'm like, what? This makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Well, the kind of business model that everybody in the mold industry gets into is hey it's real simple you use this magic product you go in you spray it on everything everything dies and everybody's healthy at that point and you can charge xyz per square foot be the cheapest in the area and you'll be great so when i i did that i went to one of my first places and and quoted them and i said i'm going to be the cheapest in the area we're going to spray this stuff it's going to kill everything here's my price they said oh we already have a price half years i said "Uh uh-oh I'm going to either need to lower my price and have a race to the bottom, or i got to rethink what's going on. Yeah. So I, re- I rethought it, and I said, wait a minute. We're, first of all, this isn't quality. You know, going in and just spraying something, it's like spraying Lysol on your countertops and calling your right. house clean. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. You really have to actually work at it. So kind of revitalized and, and made a U-turn on the business model at that point, changed it to where we're going to be a premium service. We're going to focus on the customer experience. Mm -hmm. We're going to focus on being a support system. Um, So was there for quite a while. And then uh, finally, I, you know, I didn't want to start my own business. I, I really didn't. That's not the, how I grew up. I grew up in the way to success is climb your, climb that corporate ladder You'll get rewarded along the way. You yep. save your money. You live yeah. frugally. And then at some point, you'll be able to enjoy life down the road when you're 60. And right? t- times are times are super different now. And it is like with social media, pressing entrepreneurs and pressing people to go do their own thing. But mm-hmm. like what some people don't understand, right, is that you have to get a good background. You have to get experience. You have to at least you know, have a couple of years invested in something, oh, yeah. you know, before you can start going and doing things basically on your own. Now I know there's things that you can pick up right now and start and start doing, but for the most part, like I said, it's a whole different, whole different ball game, uh, 2024 and even like the past like five to 10 years with that. So, but being, like I said, being in your business, you know, and starting out doing what you're doing and having experience from before and changing it. And like I said, not interrupting the story, mm-hmm. but, um, it's it's basically like I said, you're like a faith based entrepreneur, right? So totally. faith based. So I hear I hear that already. Like you, you're help you're trying to help some people. Mm-hmm. So you do feel passionate about what you do. Absolutely. The the things, and I'm in real estate too. So like I said, you know the things that you're mitigating are definitely a problem and can be very harmful mm-hmm. to people's health. People are losing, you know, their whole lives. Not said their 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 physical life, but their yeah. belongings, Absolutely. their home, memories, things like that could be totally totally lost in, in this situation. So I'm I'm already hearing that you you want to help that you want to help and move forward with these people in a positive way and maybe a, a Christian and hopeful way, correct? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cool. So right on. That's that that's what I was getting from what he was telling me so far. It's perfect. You know? That's good. Yeah. So so yeah, John came in and he five star rating, my brother. Hooked it up. I appreciate you. Absolutely. <laughs> but there's uh there's something else that uh you've been that's been stirring in your spirit too about 
networking and like you've been trying to find a way to get Christian business leaders. Absolutely. Like together, create an environment. And that's like kind of our heart too, is like not to forsake the gathering. Yeah. And that's why yeah, God's God, God yeah. puts us. That's why we get the right people to meet and interview and talk to, because like I said, it's all, it's all like-minded people for the kingdom without judgment mm -hmm. and without animosity or feelings towards what everyone else is doing. We can all end up helping him and help each other get to the top to be more like Jesus, yeah. you know, where we're not judging and we're just going to try to be helpful. So yeah. I'm, I'm interested in hearing and, all that. Yeah. Interested to hear about how maybe, you know, how God stepped in and changed your life. Like, cause I don't know, like I said, me and you we're, we're fresh knowing each other. So yeah. it's like you're the background, like how you came to, to more beliefs have, has God changed anything in your life right you know, and it's also like a testimony too like always the head and never the tail absolutely right it's always, always like we get yeah. those kind of people in here that are the best and not by my ego but by god's grace and what he's given me like there's i don't there's I, there's nobody better than me at what i do you right know what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah. i feel like i'm the best yeah and um but it's, it's really important too with with what you're saying you you had to set yourself and and get yourself and you were touching on this too you had to get yourself into a position where you could be the best. Right. God didn't just throw it at you and be like, "Hey, Jared, by the way, you're the best boxer. Yeah, yeah. You can coach <laughs> right. everybody at the best at that level." No, you worked your butt off to get there. It was a and lot. you positioned yourself to be able to receive that blessing from God. And that's really what you know. Talking about this networking, Good, I want to network with people who we can build each other and be around uh, other people of like mind, other people of like faith. Talk about, you know, testimony of tithing, testimonies of sowing, testimonies of, you know, I needed this and this is what was met. You know, Glenn, Jared, you guys both know being in business doesn't mean that it's just all sunshine and rainbows. Right, but hold on, like that's something that's missing. Like there's a lot of Christian groups out there mm -hmm. that they're business groups. I'm not, not using no names, but they come together and they pay a membership fee to get together. But it's not taught. They don't talk about sowing a reap. Like the supernatural aspect is lost because there's a worldly thing going on where it's like about money. Correct. Like, and then they say it's not about money, but it's like your heart is tied to that thing. Why don't you just try throwing it into the kingdom and see what happens? Absolutely. You gotta. You have to be able to walk in a bold faith. Yeah. You can't. You can't kind of be in that gray gray area of yeah, I'm a Christian. Uh, I believe you know that that God is real, but. Yeah, don't Luke worry Warren, about any of that. That's super called. correct. Yeah, and, and the Bible, the Bible says, "Be either hot or cold." You know, <laughs> he vomits. So, so that looks scary. To, to add to this, just to start us off, going into like testimony and you mm -hmm. building everything and what went through your trials and tribulations. So, like realistically, a couple things. I just went to I went to the Adam Lamb Wednesday night service. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was actually really fire. And, you know, Adam Lamb comes out from Texas. He helps with revival. He's good friends with Adelis and Jonathan. Yep. And he's a basic serial entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur and super successful. So I got something from him. I got something from Adelis, and I wanted to add, add something else. But the thing is, when people see preachers and faith-based people preaching about prosperity and everything else like that, First off, in the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, you know, God made promises to Abraham, and then Abraham, Isaac, go. and Jacob, there and we those go. were put there. Then in the New Testament, it was referred back that the, the followers of Christ and the people that are faith-based Christians will indeed get the same promises, Bless the absolutely. same Abraham. promises to them. So yep. you're supposed to prosper, and I could spend a long time going through Bible verses, and so could Jared, and I'm sure you could too, where it talks about prosperity and everything else. We talk about tithing. You know, even in the fields where they were growing crops, they say, give the corners, you know, give some of the corners to, to the beggars and the people they're going to stroll through. Yeah. And it's like whoever gave the bigger corners and weren't selfish and gave more out, they reaped a bigger harvest and they reaped more, you know, more 10, 20, 30 fold than, than the other people. So I believe in all that. And like Jonathan says, and I say, it, um, Jared says it, listen, if you don't like big crowds and big churches, then you must not like Jesus. Cause that's what Jesus did. Yeah. And he went against the law and he went against the Pharisees and the Romans and he was sitting there preaching and thousands came to see him. So if you don't like the big gatherings, well then you're not down with Jesus and you probably wouldn't like him either. Right. So, and that's not down in the small ones too. Like God, there's other places oh, in no, the body love, where they got to build love things these up. Small churches. Not down in nothing. But no, I'm no, saying, no, 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 no. Don't down the big things neither you no know that's what i'm saying, what I'm saying. I, I visit the small churches me and you went to that really small church in aliquippa there's one in newcastle that i really really like there's these small churches and i feel homey i like it a lot mm -hmm. so i got so i got two things to refer back to some of the stuff you were saying mm -hmm. so i've heard this before um melissa 
Melissa Laughlin, uh, yep. Blessed, Blessed Home, Home Project. So Melissa's like mine and Jerry's little sister. Me and Melissa go back to we were little kids, yep. basically. And um, she, what she's doing is great. Blessed Home Project is a great charity that's growing in the city of Pittsburgh to help out. But she always tells me, too, because like so Jonathan Adele has told her, like the story in the Bible where the woman had jars, right? And yeah. she was told to get as many jars as she could. Multiple so, vessels. And, and then and she got multiple vessels, as many as she could. And... They filled them with oil, and she had to sell the oil so she can get money to take care of her problems. Now, if she would have got a million jars, they would have filled them all. Right. So there's no stopping. So you have to give God jars to fill, correct? Right. Absolutely. So that's what – so, all right, we have a podcast. You have a business. You're doing a Bible study. The more things that you're putting out there for the good, for the kingdom, with belief that God's going to bless you in them, the better because you're giving them jars to fill. Now, yeah. Adele has preached on this. So – Two more points, and I'm, I'm going to get. I'll get off the mic and let you guys go back. But those two, focus has got to be led by the Holy Ghost, though. One hundred percent can't Holy be Ghost led. Just can't be pointing and shooting. Yeah, all over you the can't place. be like, oh, well, I want to, yeah. I want to do this, I want to do that, and yeah. they're not led by the if Holy Ghost. If you're prayed up, spirit. fast it up. Yeah, if you're yeah. prayed up, fast yeah. it up. You touched on it right before we went live here. You touched on the fact that you know you're not having dreams about this. You're not getting yelled at from the the big booming voice of God, right. but you're sensitive in your spirit to where He's pushing you in a certain direction. I'm going to walk that. And Jared, when one of the times when we first met, one of the things I said is, this is a time of advancement. When God says move, I'm moving. When you said, hey, do you want to be on the podcast? I didn't say, well, let me go pray about it for a couple weeks, and then we'll get together and figure out what works for me. I'm going to give you some talking points, and we'll figure it out. No, you're directed by the Holy Spirit. You move forward. I want, if God opens a door, I'm going to run through it. That's and right. you're supposed you got to be like like a yes man, not mm -hmm. like a yes man, like obeying other people and saying yes to everyone, but like yes to like, let me do this and let me do that. Mm -hmm. And if it's connected with the kingdom and the Holy Ghost, then it's good. Yep. So hold on, two points real fast, and I'm going to let you Go. guys roll because these are really two good points. Go. So one, when Adam Lamb was talking, and we all know this, there's a thing called imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. which where people don't think they're good enough to do what they want to do. Like, I want to be, good. you know, I want to be a musician. And then you start getting some some headway and you're like, oh, I don't really deserve this. I'm not like, I'm not good enough for this. That's called imposter syndrome. Or you get a, a raise or a promotion at your job and now you're sitting there like, wow, look at my office. Look at my title. I got this raise. Do I really deserve this? Dude, so Adam Lamb, when he talks to people, because he has his business and he coaches and he builds people up, Christians and stuff like that. And people, he'll be like, well, how much money do you make now? And how much money do you want to make? Mm -hmm. And people get all like, they get kind of timid. Like, well, you know, um, I'm kind of blessed. Me and the wife and the kids have a nice house and we have cars and by the glory of God, like we have what we have now. All right. Well, how much do you want to make? Like you're here for coaching and we want to try to make you go through the roof like everybody else. All right. How much do you want to make? Well, you, just tell me a number. You want to make a million dollars a year, a million dollars a month. Put the number out there. Why? Because Christians need to have money. They need to have power. They need to have a political stance. Yep. They need to have a voice because it says, right? The, the righteous the, are as bold as a lion. Too. The right. right. Are, so, but the, but the wealth of the wicked are stored up for the just. So the more good people that have money, the more good people that have power and a voice, the better, because we can change the world, you know, one brick at a time and build this and build it for the kingdom and build it to change everything for the good. So there's that. You can't be like, well, maybe, right. or I think I deserve. No, if you're walking in the spirit and you're helping others and you're doing good, you deserve everything that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. You deserve the world. That's right. And if that's what God wants you to do, he wants you, you know, to do. But sometimes Sometimes what you want isn't what God wants. So you just pivot and you just go from this to that and segue. And as soon as you start pressing that, and it, it happens real fast in a hurry, which is why some people oh, yeah. that have businesses, they just go bang, bang, bang. Some people with a social media presence or anything like that, right? Like it happens now. All right. So there's that. So we have to not be afraid of that. Now back to filling the jars because Adele has preached on it and it, it gave me a different little bit of a different insight yeah. than the woman with the jars. The first miracle that Jesus performed, he turned water into wine. Now read it right in the scripture. They were at the party. They ran out of wine. Mary, Jesus's mother, all right, looked at Jesus and said, hey, they're out of wine. And Jesus was like, what woman? do you want me to do about it? Basically, woman, what do yeah. you want me to do about it's it? It's not yeah. my time. And it's not my time. And Jesus was basically like, no, I'm not. So Mary looked at the servants or the house, 
the 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 party you know people at the you know, whatever you know i don't know what if they were servants or just the people throwing the party yeah right yeah. see <laughs> she looked at them you know was like do whatever my son wants you to do and they went and they got all the em- all the empty containers you know the jugs and stuff like that and they were pretty big got them all and jesus said fill them with water so they went and filled them with water so hold on did Jesus do it? No. Nope. No. So it goes back to what you were saying. You have to take action and you have to do stuff. So they just believed Mary. They didn't know what they were doing. They're like, what's going on here? This is crazy. Uh, we need wine. This woman's telling us to do what, our, what, my, what her son you know, wants us to do. And we're going to fill in these big jugs up with water. We're getting all this stuff. They didn't know what was going on, but they put in the work, right? They had faith and they did it. They didn't know what they were doing, but they did it. Mm-hmm. They did what they were told. From Mary, and Jesus had them come and bring them. And then you know what Jesus did? He blessed them. And bang, that water turned to the mm-hmm. best wine that they have ever had. So, back to what you were saying. If you put in the work, you're faith-based and you move forward, God mm-hmm. can bless these things. But if you sit around and you do nothing and you don't have faith, then nothing's going to happen. That, so that's the two points I want to make. All right, John, yeah. yeah, because <laughs> that's delayed huge. obedience is disobedience. Mm-hmm. Right. That's huge, too. You know, I was, I was thinking of that um, on the way in today. First of all, it starts with faith. Mary's faith to go to Jesus. Like, out of everybody at the, at the place, she could have gone to the, the guy who owns a wine, the, the vineyards down the road. Right. A million different places. Hey, where did we get the wine to begin with? We can go back to them. We've got money. We can figure it out, right? But no, she had the faith to go, nope, Jesus, you're the man. You're the one I need to reach to. You're the one who's going to get this started. I know we're going to have to do something, but you are who I need to talk to about this. So that's first. The other part is... To have these vessels and to, to be moving forward, you, you had mentioned you can't just sit and wait, right? You've got to put yourself in a position to be blessed. If you think that you're going to be working at Sheets and God's going to bless you by somebody walking in and handing you a million dollars and that's, that's the blessing. That's First of all, that money runs out. Look at everybody who wins the lottery. They're broken in the exact same position, most of the time worse, within a year and a half or two years. They give their money away. They drink it away. They do worldly things with it. They don't know. So you've got to position yourself and you've got to let God mold you into a position where you're not going to destroy your life based on... On this prosperity so and wealth, bro. you've got to be in that position. You got to be able to take the right steps forward, and you got to be able to maintain. I agree with all that. Like I said, it's you know, teach a man to fish, feed him for the rest of his life, give a man a fish, and he just eats right then right. and there. But like I said, you have to be able to be, you have to have patience because things do take some time. You have to have obedience. You have to press in. You have to rule with the spirit because, like I said, even people like Moses, right? He had a lot of problems, wandered around, and wasted a lot of time. You know, Mm -hmm. and there's a whole lot of stories in the Bible for that. Like I said, Joseph waited how long David waited, how long a lot of people had to wait. Um, Look at Job. And I love the book of Job because like like John said, wasn't in a position like everybody knows the story of David and Bathsheba. He stayed home when it was a season for kings go out to war. Like -hmm. there was a war to fight. He's the leader. He was supposed to go out, but he's just stayed home. Yeah. Yeah. And that's. When he's seen Bathsheba and, and over that's there where getting a bath. People right. get so mixed problems, up on yeah. those seasons of waiting that God wants you to be waiting. But if you look at most of the times in the Bible where people had to wait, you know, when when the Israelites were getting or the yeah, the Israelites were stuck in the desert, right? With manna. Right. Why were they stuck? It wasn't because God wanted to teach them a lesson. It was because they were complaining. The words that come out of your mouth matter. If your words are constantly, I want this business because I don't have. I want this business because I can't do. I can't. I'm sick of I can't provide or I can't this. If that's your focus, you're going to be stuck there a long time. It's got to be this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is who I am. And it's it's a true change in yourself to think that way and to talk that way. It's no long, It's it's not a sit and wait type of thing. You've got to position yourself and. It, I got to be honest, if you're working a job and you think that you work nine to five, if you come home and sit there and someday you're going to get promoted up until this prosperity level, it, it very rarely happens. Look at how many people who are working for a business who make prosperous money. And when I talk about prosperous money at this point, all of these people um, in the United States, 200 grand, what's that get you at this point? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not much, <laughs> no. right? 
Yeah, I mean, they were just talking about real. You're you're in real estate. If you're at two hundred thousand dollars a year gross income, what kind of house can you provide at this point? What can you get approved it's, for? Well, like I said, because things things are a different ball game, especially in the past like four or five years. But it's like accelerated super fast the last couple. Yeah, and it's just all different. And if even if you look at like the average car payment, you know, it's close to a thousand dollars. We're talking average. That's yeah. average. So yeah. that's you know, average salary is like seventy some, which ain't really doing a whole lot. And that's why this younger generation are like, we're never going to own a home because yep. it's almost getting impossible because they're pricing themselves out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah, you have to think big, and that's what I encourage people to do. It's like, yeah, you have to be. Bold, bold like the woman with the blood disease mm -hmm. that pushed through the crowd and grabbed onto Jesus's robe because she had faith that she was going to be healed from that blood disease. And you know the story, like I said, Jesus stopped dead in his tracks, said, who touched me? And his disciples were like, everyone's touching you, Jesus. He's like, no, I felt power mm -hmm. come from me. And she was there. Yeah, man, it like it gets me emotional because I feel like I was there with Jesus. And like he looked at her and was like. You had the faith. Yeah. You knew it, and you were bold enough, and you were healed. So you have to have faith like that. I, I got to say, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit works and moves because literally so far we've talked about three scriptures. In every single one of them, I had already been – it was already on my heart today. So that was one of the ones that I thought about in, in what how I was thinking about it and, and dwelling on it. The revelation that I had on that even just this morning – was that woman had had that bold faith to reach out and touch Jesus. She didn't have this mousy, like, Jesus didn't say, who prayed real quietly over there that yeah, they could be right. healed, right? No, it was who came to me, who touched me, who, they want it, I'm here to give it to you. And that's that same thing. So back to what you were saying about Adam and Adalus, right? They want, Adam was talking about, hey, how much do you want to make? If you can't say it, how are right. you going to do it? Right, you've got. That's the first step: is to speak that, speak that into existence. Um, you know, no word comes back void. The Bible says it. It's it, the spoken word has power. Right? That's Rama. That's yeah. what the, the Rama gospel is. But it's really important, and, and I'm on that same page. I when we started my wife's second business, which is Senior Living Academy, we we teach people a, a business online. So there's a lot of. Um, stuff that we either had to learn ourselves from the ground up or try to find people to help like digital marketing wise and do some of the stuff that you're doing. And we were meeting with a lot of digital marketers and they're like, well, where do you see this going? Same conversation like Adam's having. And they didn't get it. I did. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to write a million dollar tithe check off of this business. And they're like, what? <laughs> they're like, what's tithe? So I got to tell them what tithe was, but then they were like confused. They're like, well, how many students do you have right now? I'm like, two. They're like, well, how, how are you already viewing this that big? Well, Come I know on. who my God is, and I know I'm not – one of the prayers that I, I, I was really focusing on during prayer and fasting, I started making a prayer list and writing, you know, where I wanted to go in business, where I wanted to be with my family, where I wanted to bless, like how many people. And I stopped and I said, you know what, Father – don't let my earthly imagination limit you, your creativity it's because Fire. that's huge. I could sit there and say, well, I want this much money. Yeah, I want to write a million-dollar tie check. Yeah, I want four businesses. Well, what if God had ten businesses? Mm -hmm. What if God wanted to just give me all the businesses? They're all his, right? Yeah. All the gold and silver is his. So, yes, you have to be specific, but be careful in your prayers not to limit what God's doing. You've got to be able to walk in that, like, I'm just me. I, if God opens the door, who knows? And people like, like I, I encourage everyone to read the Bible. You know, at least read the New <clears throat> Testament with Jesus, stuff like that. But like, realistically, look through the whole scripture of people being blessed big time. Oh, and yeah. I stand by this, and it seems like people talk in circles and preachers talk in circles and everything, but it's like, it's real. And it goes back to like, I tell people just being an entrepreneur and people saying, write down your goals, write down your dreams on paper, manifest it. It's the same thing we're talking. So if you don't believe in God, well, you're talking what to the creator of the universe, which is God, you know what I'm saying? Like you're talking to them. If the universe was created and you see people that just go, like I said, just go up like this. Well, how do you think they did it? Because they had the confidence. They believed in themselves. They put it out there, out of their mouth. They wrote it on a piece of paper. They told people about it. They pressed it and they actually gave the hundred hours a week and they did what they had to do. All right. And then you see people, like I said, go from zero to a hundred, like bang. You're like, how'd that happen? Because God can do anything. Yeah. He, 100% can.
So people need to just get on board with actually believing in themselves and being confident, being bold enough to ask, and then putting in the work. Because like you said, you're not going to be working at Sheets and mm-hmm. someone ain't going to hand come in and hand you a million dollars. Well, maybe someone will, like Mr. Beast, you know, with YouTube, yeah. and he just does these things, whatever. But here's the thing, too. Like, you're not going to be at Sheets like these young kids thinking Steven Spielberg is going to walk in and be like, oh, I see you joking with your friend. You're going to be in my next movie. No, you know who gets that role? Actors that are acting, went to acting classes, and they're putting in auditions and getting hit left and right with no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And then finally, someone sees them and they take them and they pull them out of the pit and give them their break. And you just see them come... Like come up like that, but yeah. you can see the ten years of struggle they put right. in. Right. So you have to stay on the path. Uh, looking at where we're at with time wise, yeah. so I mean, what I like to hear, like I said, a little bit um, is just if you want to, if you want to talk about maybe like your journey with yeah. God and how you feel about that with business or family or where, if it started somewhere bad and came up, or if you yeah. know, anything that you want to talk about with all that, you know, yeah. so. You know, I, I grew up Christian, um, was pretty involved. Uh, you know, my parents were Catholic, but I, I knew there was a little bit more. So I'd, I'd go to Catholic church with them on, on Sunday mornings, but then I'd go to a full gospel church either in the afternoon or in the evening, plus then youth group and was really involved. Went to college and, you know, definitely started drinking, doing all the worldly stuff that you, what you, I mean, what you see is what you yeah. get, right? Everything that you put in front of your mind matters. What you surround yourself matters. And in going into that atmosphere without, like, I had no experience with it. I didn't party in high school. I, I was involved with school. So did that and really it just stole years. It really did. Um, still years out of my life, you know, I, I love playing pool. I love shooting darts. I could play cornhole all day. All those fun and games uh, I'm really good at. And it was, uh, it makes you feel like instant gratification, right? So I spent years going out and doing those things and, um, it didn't develop you. It kept me stuck and I kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it and it wasted years. And then when COVID hit, I ended up getting laid off from my job. And really, it was like two years of just barely manna. Like every time we were almost empty, God would throw something else at us. And it, it was tough because, you know, we, we did it to ourselves. It was like if you, if you just stop like having some beer every now and again, if you would start focus on this, that, and the other right. thing, completely changes. So we did, and, and we started speaking more boldly. We started having that bold faith to walk forward in what God had for us. Um, and I wrestled with God too. You know, I was making changes in my life. I was living less than paycheck to paycheck. I mean, I had at that point 17 years of sales experience and I was going out and working landscaping jobs for cash. Like, hey, who can pick up a laborer for the day? <clears throat> going to interviews and no one calling me back. I'm like, is it me? Do I really have, like you said, that at the beginning of the podcast yeah the imposter syndrome i'm like is it me do i really have what it takes to make this type of money like what's going on what do i do so i kept working and and trying and i got to the point i remember i was walking down the road and i said god i can't be a blessing to other people in the status that i'm in now yeah i I can't do this i i want to bless my kids i have kids i have kids who financially need some help I have kids who, you know, need a role model to to move forward in their lives and business and to realize, hey, I need to take these steps of faith to do that. Um, So I I really wrestled with God. I said, it needs to change. I've even through lack, tithed, given, I've made sure that I'm still sowing. I, I want to sow more. And I will say to this day, one of my one of my most exciting things is at the end of the week saying, how much can I, how much can I give this week? Or if like business was slow that week, I'm like, no, God, this isn't enough. I need to give more. I want to give more. That's where my heart is. Like, I love giving. I, it's like exciting to sow into the kingdom of God and to see what it does. So um, we, we talked a little bit about coming through it. Well, I I literally would get laid off, couldn't get a call back for jobs, couldn't do this. Then finally one day it was like time to do something different. And God literally opened the door to where I could start my business. I started the business and it the day it was like two days after I got my home improvement contractor's license, which is the only license you really need in Pennsylvania and your insurance and that kind of stuff. 
literally got a phone call and they're like, hey, John, uh, so-and-so told me to call you. I have no clue who so-and-so was. I think I did business with them maybe one time like eight years ago. And I explained to him, hey, I don't work for Company X anymore. I own Alpha Air Quality. It's my company. They said, we don't care what the company's name is. We care that we're using you. You're who we want. And it just started flowing like that. I made a, a bold post in one of the mold support groups. And, you know, a normal post in those groups would get like 10 or 15 likes, maybe a couple comments. I went to bed that night, woke up the next morning. It had um, like 176 likes and 75 comments. People asking me to come to New <laughs> yeah, Jersey. Man. And like all, it was like, That's I God, just started baby. this. That's yeah. God. Yeah, it's all That's God. That's favor. So... All of those things, and it just kept flowing, like businesses that you that couldn't do the jobs that they need, so they just wanted to give me the contract. Like, here, can you do this? Um, coming in more expensive on bids, and the company's like, no, we want to work with you. We don't care about price. Like, you're who we want. So God can fight those battles. If you just get into your mind that if I'm following what God does, all these things of, yeah, but what are what are people going to think? Who cares? God and the Holy Spirit can deal with that. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do it the right way. Um, you know, in my business, a lot of people get leads by just going out and paying for Home Advisor, Angie's List, or, you know, Google Ads, and all this, just how much money can we throw at the problem? Well, I'm still profiting on it. That's the way most people start these businesses in a, in a home improvement business. Mm -hmm. I felt led since the beginning not to do that. I haven't paid for one dime of ads. I'm not doing it. I get more than enough leads. I keep moving forward because I have faith that, you know, when somebody asks, well, where's your next lead coming from? Same place the first ones did. God. It's yeah. a, it's all God. Like, yeah. everybody that I'm talking to, it makes no sense. Like, it made no sense that after 24 hours, what are the chances a barber who owns a military mission group or started a military missions group, why would he know somebody that needs my services not, like, in a month or two now right? right right in the place where the lord set me at Great. yeah man <laughs> yep yeah yeah so it's it's really amazing that even no matter how long you've been in that wilderness when you change your mindset when you change the words that are coming out of your mouth and when you have true faith right i'm not talking about yeah he'll probably do it no he'll do it Right, you gotta have that mindset. Like, no, 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 we're not waiting to see what God's gonna do. Maybe He'll do something someday. No, it's already done. I'm just—I don't know who's giving it to me, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. That's why, and you gotta keep that because if it doesn't happen today, it's gonna happen tomorrow. Right. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, it's gonna happen next week. Mm -hmm. If it don't happen next week, it's gonna happen next month. Yep. Come on, hey, it's hey, it's, come on. it's done. Let me tell me about it. It's but done. It's it's like. Like I said, it's faith. I talk about, you know, one-on-one Faith Street all the time. you got to stay on Faith Street. If you leave mm -hmm. Faith Street, Street, you know, one-on-one Faith Street, Ooh, you, go to, you go to one-on-one I Give Up Avenue, dude, your blessings got sent to Faith Street. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and you're not there anymore. you got to stay good. on Faith Street. And anybody in their life, I don't care who you are, you can somehow, some way, you can think of a time. Maybe, maybe you were trying to get a really good grade on a test in school. You know, and maybe it didn't work out the first test, second test, you know, but you actually upped your game. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the third test, you got that A and you went home to your parents like, look, I did it. I got an A or anything. Maybe maybe you're shooting shots at a girl, you know, when you're young, you like a girl, you know, and you're shooting shots at her. And finally, after, you know, like two months, she's like, all right, I'll go out with you. And you end up with that girl and it ends up being awesome. You're like, wow, what if I would have gave up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just something, you know, you can young men can relate to because that's what we have to do as as men is we have to you know, we have to try. Yeah. You yeah. know? It's like it's like that saying they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. But yeah. there's also like a Bible story that says oh. like the woman that kept going back to the judge and he was like, Well, leave me alone. Okay. Holy Spirit again. Yeah. I literally yeah. had that phrase. The squeaky wheel gets the oil all day long. Amen. You gotta wrestle with God. You gotta say, God, still here, still yeah. waiting. I'm doing what you told me to do. Let's go. Yeah. Time to go. I this, got people to help. This ain't scripture, but it's called push. Pray until something happens. That's like, right. Pray until going. something happens. We keep going. We keep going. We keep mm -hmm. taking it before God. We keep thanking them as if we have it. We push, push. Yep. Also, keep eight. pressing in. Never cease in prayer. Give thanks always. Like that's always. Always yep. doesn't mean. Always means always. Mm -hmm. Which is we live in that. Right. That, it's nonstop. It's not. I did it this morning. I'll do it tomorrow morning. I went to church Sunday. I'll go back next Sunday. Yeah. And it's if you're not lifestyle. getting revelation, pray in the spirit. Get out there. Like if you can't vocalize what is going on, like hey, I don't know what's going on. Get that spirit man Come moving on, man. and exercise it because he, he knows. He Build. knows what's going on. He knows Build what yeah. he's working on. 
Yeah. That's it. Build but it I up. Heard, so even with that, with your testimony right there, and it's similar to a lot of Christians, I hear um, real biblical faith driven uh, emotions coming out of you, which is you hit rough times. Things weren't going that great. You were still trying. You were also still tithing. Mm -hmm. So you were giving what you needed, but you still gave it to God. You still had hope, and you kept faith. And then you felt in your spirit to start your own business, and you gave God a jar to fill. Mm -hmm. You started that business. You put it out there, and then pretty fast, not saying you went from zero to millions, but you went from struggling in hard times, and you still kept your faith to, hey, now I have something that's operational. People are coming to me. You're not using uh, lead generators and things like that. People are still coming. You're still getting work. You're getting connected to the right people. And it's by the grace of God because you're keeping the faith and you pressed in and you didn't sit there and complain. You just kept on doing what you had to do. Right. Jared's doing the same thing. I'm doing the same thing. Brother Chuck, you know, at the yeah. barbershop, he's doing the same thing. And that's what you're supposed to do as a Christian. You're supposed to have all the trust and faith in there. But it sounds like you're actually living it as well with everything that's happening oh, in your life. It is. And, and you touched on a really important part of keeping that faith in in. One of the biggest things that you have to do is watch what you allow around you, right? So right after I started the business, things are going great. I'm like, man, I can't believe how this is flowing. God's really doing a work. Engine blew in my car that day. I'm like, how do I get to my job? How am I taking my equipment places? My car just blew up. What am I supposed to do? I've been broke for two years at least at this point. No one's going to give me a loan for a car on a new business. Everybody around me, listen, just take the cash you have, buy a clunker, like, you'll you'll be fine, we'll get something down the road, we'll figure it out down the road, you can't get something good. Next thing I know, I was actually at youth, I, I had my daughter at RT Youth that night, and I was sitting there, and I had all but given up, like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, at this point I've been looking for a car for three weeks, like, at some point, I'm going to have to do something. I've already prayed. Something's coming. My phone rings, and they're like, hey, you can come pick up that Audi. I'm like, what? Everybody already told me I can't get what I want. And they're like, oh, no. I said, well, what do you need? Like, it's a new business. I don't even have a tax return yet. They're like, no documents needed. Just come in. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Keep <laughs> going. Yeah. Don't quit. So, so yeah, in in – same with, like, we were living in a junk place because, again, we, we had struggled. We had been in a bad place. And we found a place, and, and kudos to my wife. She kept looking. She found a place. She's like, let's go look at it. I'm like, why? Next thing you know, we're looking at this place, and this guy's like, listen. And it's, it's not a little place. It's 50 acres in the middle of nowhere with a beautiful house. I have three dogs. No one wants to give a house to somebody with three dogs, right? right? So... We're in there. He's like, listen, I just don't want to deal with anybody else. I have like 60 phone calls. Can you guys, if you guys are interested, you can just have it. I'm like, what do you need from us? He's like, nothing. No security right. pause, no nothing. No, just go. Right. right. And, right. and all of those things. And, and I loved it because I was talking to one of my family members and they're like, yeah, but why? Why would they have done that? That doesn't even make sense. I said, exactly. It doesn't make sense. If it made sense, it would just be me putting my nose to the grindstone. Mm -hmm. And, and, but it's not. It's God. God does unexplicable things. The Holy Spirit makes people do weird stuff. Look at our church. We meet <laughs> yeah, for I was free just, I was bring that up. in a multi-million uh, yeah. dollar facility. Why? Because the Holy Spirit makes people do stuff. We have attorneys that fight battles at our church for yes. no reason. Yes. What? They have no stake in the game. They don't even go there, nor do they have... I mean, I'm not going to speak that they don't have desire to go there. They're going right, to be there. Right. But something in them is making them do these things. And, and that's where... I, I caution you as you step out in business. I caution everybody as you step out in business. Make sure that you're working hard, but make sure that you're leaving the door open for God to do unexplainable things because the moment that you think that it's out of your own power, the moment that you limit God into your own power, well, that's what you're going to get. You're going to just get what you have by your own power, mm -hmm. right? And that's not good because that comes with the worldly stuff, it comes like we were talking about the networking stuff earlier. It comes with how do you get business? Well, I'm going to go to this bar because that's where everybody is. That's how you get business. That's how you meet new people. That doesn't have to be that way. So make sure you leave that space for God to bless you and bless your family, bless your business. And if you can do it in the natural, it's not big enough for God. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, right. that's true, man. you yep. got to have big, amazing dreams. That's and right. 
I mean, I kind of talk about like the same people, but that's because it's my life. And I, I look up to some people and I, I listen to videos and I, I'm fans of them. And I, I say this too, like with The Rock, man, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson got cut from the Canadian League. You know, seven bucks in his pocket. That's why it's like seven do- seven bucks productions or whatever. And he his dreams were shattered. And then he, he went the wrestling route, which wasn't his dream. His whole dream was to be in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And then you know, cut, cut to the future whenever he wanted to get into movies and stuff like that. You know, I remember I seen an interview and I'm pretty sure don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it was him that said like, you know, I want to be as big as like Will Smith. And they're like, I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. Right. But look at him now. Dwayne, the rock Johnson is like one of the biggest action stars ever. But here, look at, look at his life. He's always charismatic and inspiring and helpful and he gives money away he helps people he's always surprising people that are down and out with hey look what i did for you and everything else like that and it's not a look at me thing it's because he really i think is a genuine good person like he there's a lot of people out there that we see that you know have a fake persona i believe that this dude is who he says he is i believe he's a very helpful kind compassionate man that wants to give back and look at how he just skyrocketed with success Mm -hmm. so there's that as well and like i said it it goes from people like him to people like you or jared or myself or the christian's mission or everything else that we're doing um with entrepreneur events and things for the kingdom and watch how fast things accelerate when you put god behind you Mm -hmm. and it's just like i like to hear all these stories and who knows where you're going to go from here but it sounds like you're building your foundation on rock brother you're building mm-hmm. it on rock not mm-hmm. on sand and that's the right way to go and we're still going to press in yep. and we're still making connections and we're still going to go forward but i believe that god definitely has blessed you i believe he's going to continue to bless you and just from being around you and hearing the testimony i know that like i said you have the the full belief in in the promises that god makes in the book of Genesis and mm-hmm. throughout the Bible, that you're going to keep pressing in and do good things. And I believe you're going to write that million-dollar seed one day because yeah. you're going to have a business that's going to be making For millions sure. and millions and millions, and it's going to go towards the kingdom. And I believe right. that. Very and nice. I, I feel it in my heart. And we're going to do we're going to do the same thing. We're Absolutely. all up there. But that's what Absolutely. it is. It's, it's like-minded people. Mm-hmm. It's the company that you keep, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, yeah, we're doing yeah we're doing good on time. But, yeah. I mean, I, I, at least I... Not to cut you off, but I, I do appreciate you coming. I appreciate you sharing testimony. For sure. I appreciate, yep. you know, giving words of hope. Yeah, yep. and it's, it's – the Bible says that we overcome by the word of our testimony, right? Yes. People th- people hey. who are in these sales jobs – Hey, that's the Christian – one of the Christian mission scriptures, Revelation 12, 11. Yeah. Let's do it. They overcame him by the word of their te- – <laughs> yes. by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, yeah. and not – Loving their own life unto death, which means it's, it's not about me. It's right. So people who are stuck, people who have been with the same company for years and years and years and think it's just one more month that I'm going to get that promotion that breaks the bank. That 10% promotion is not going to change your life. It's no. not going to change your life. Do something. Start thinking. And I, when I say think of these 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 things to like vessels, when you're thinking of these creative vessels – Very rarely is it these click things from Amazon or drop shipping a product. Start something you care about. Start something that makes a difference. Everybody makes a difference. There's something that you love. There's something that you can do. And it's something that, like, even with our kids, with my my youngest is 13, we've started teaching her entrepreneur values. You know, what can you do? Pick these three things. We're going to figure out how to get you started in business. What do you like? What don't you like? How do you want to make a difference with? And uh, it's, a, it's a matter of changing the mindset, not just of you, but for future generations. You know, the Bible talks about leaving an inheritance to your kids, right? But I, I truly believe a lot of the inheritance is going to be land. It's going to be money. But it's also mindset in, in a changed way of it's life, values. right? It's, it's values. values. It's, it's who way, they are. Yeah. To, to so carry you, on to the next generation, next generation. That's right. Mm-hmm. If you look at if you look at families that the wealth has carried over generational wealth, right? There's not too many in the world that you can trace their lineage back to anybody. Even like I, I was just listening to a study the other day. I think they were talking about the Rockefellers, and the Rockefellers only that generational wealth lasted for three generations. That's nothing, right? <laughs> so if you look at the Jewish people. Oh, Jew- yeah. Jewish wealth goes way back and it's still going, right? And their whole life is different. Like I said, their yeah. whole li- worldly life is Correct. totally different. And like I said, some people might look down on them and be like boring or meek or weak mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, no, they're smart. Yeah. They're living the dream for real. And it's yeah. going generation to generation to generation. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing to think about is, is God sees you. God sees you where you're at. God sees where you want to go. Dream big. Have big faith. If you don't have big faith, you have a problem. I made a, a post 
uh, during prayer and fasting this year, and it said, "Big dreams or big goals, bigger God." And that's that's the truth. You know, whatever goal I can come up with in my head, he built everything. Yeah. He made it all. Yeah. It's all his. Yes. So if if I can literally sit there, fathom it, draw it on a table. That's nothing for him. Yeah. No, not at all. Amen. Not at all. Amen. Well, John Nauman, Alpha Air Quality, my brother in the Lord. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah. Thank you guys for having so me. so much, man. I love you, bro. I appreciate up there, up there. Yeah, yeah for sure, bro. <laughs> Thank you. So, but uh, we're going to do this. This uh, We're just going to keep pressing in, man. Networking. I want to connect with you mm-hmm. outside of here. Talk about how we could get more people together. Anybody absolutely. that you know. Absolutely. That's a Christian business owner that's, you know, like us. Absolutely, and we, even if they're not, they're got potential. Whatever, whatever happens, let's get every, yeah. let's get in the same room and talk about it. Absolutely, if you think about that networking, think about how many people, if they came to that group and see a bunch of Christians who are prospering, who are tithing, who give ten percent of their income away, right, and are making buku money, all of a sudden that doesn't just turn into people who Christians want to be a part of. People want to find out. Wait, there's more to to going to church than just kneeling, standing up, kneeling, standing up, doing yeah. this prayer for sixty minutes. Yeah. There's more to what. God is, yeah, there is, but that we have to be examples. Yeah, so I'm excited. That's, it. About That's what's happening right now, bro, and you're a part of it, and I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, thanks, guys. All so right. we want to do what Christians, Christians uh, dot io. Yeah, right. Christians yeah. dot yeah, io. Hit a like, follow us on Christians. Share this. Share it. Uh, grab a t shirt, and we out. Love yeah, you. yeah, yeah. But support, yeah, supporting the mission. Like I said, Christians.io. Hey, check out uh, another videos from us on YouTube. Check out some more videos, some testimony, and add a comment, uh, like because that helps the algorithm. We uh we appreciate that, everybody. But hey, be blessed. We out.